This video will help you to improve your performance, your display, your graphics and also your gameplay. So Wuthering Waves is struggling big time. The developer every single day are throwing out some big fat patches of 200 megabytes plus. Every time you open your device, you know. So either you play on an old or new device, assuming you have the latest iOS or OS system on either Apple or Android, this is the right video for you. I'm going to get through the entire setting and just highlight the features that for example you need to turn down if you have some performance issue and the features you need to change in order to have a better graphics and gameplay experience and now quickly on your left this is the game when you download it with the default setting and on your right this is the game the same game on the same phone <laughs> we changed the settings so this is just to tell you really the default setting sucks on this game especially for mobile so let's get started in the setting the sound setting we don't care the graphic setting so first of all when the game come as every game is at 30 frame per second so please come here and try 60 frame per second and from here just work it out try to put your basic here features like the graphics quality the resolution um, don't touch the brightness yet, I'm going to let you know a little trick here, but just try and to advance as high as you can and see how it goes. Now, I just want to say right away, the three features on any new mobile game of this genre, of this quality, is the FSR here, the LOD and the Capsule AO. So I'm going to put the definition quickly on the screen, you can read it for yourself, but all of this takes a lot from your phone so if you are 60 frames per second and with medium quality you are struggling please feel free to turn those off the capsule AO is the first one you can get rid of because it's about the shadow so you know just make it more softer smoother maybe you don't care so you can try just to put this one down but all those features features uh, takes a lot from your phone so try this out before to do anything else and it worked perfectly well on my old iPhone 11. I had some lag issues early on while trying to put every single advanced features. I took those three out and now the game ran smoothly, allowing me to put back all the other features to the highest quality. Now if we look at the brightness here, so as you can see, I'm totally down here. And I'm going to show you the difference. When the game comes, the brightness is just too high. The overall brightness of this game is just too high. That's why when you upload the game, it feels very washed out, to be honest with you. So here, put this down, you are going to see all the contrast, the vivid colors coming back to the screen, and you have that nice fairy experience, like you have that great feel when you're in Genshin Impact or on Cast Rail. So the developer here went too angry on the brightness, so put this down. Me, I just put one, you just press one on the plus here, um, it was enough, it's my preference, totally up to you, but please bring it down, yeah, it's just a game changer. Of course, if you are still struggling with low graphics quality and resolution while you're on 60 frames per second, you can also bring down the shadow quality and the special effect quality. And if you are still struggling after all of that, then after you touch your frame rate and, and you can try 45 frames per second. But with this type of game, you better have a device that can handle 60 frames per second. So don't forget, bring down the FSR, LOD, Capsule AO, and also later on, if you are still struggling, the shadow quality, the special effect quality before to bring down the frame rate at last at 45 frames per second, if it's not working for you, but you should be fine. Now we move to the camera sitting, and this is really the display, but also the gameplay. Why? First, you have the view sensitivity of the camera. When you come, it's very stiff. You have to swipe like five times just to look what's happening behind you and during battles it's very bad the view sensitivity is not enough on this game so here my recommendation is put everything to 100 especially when you're on mobile try it out you will see it's still smooth and you can do a good quarter or even if you do just a wide swipe and you are on exploration you can do nearly a 90 degree which is pretty nice so bring this up to 100 for the view sensitivity for the camera after here you have the camera shake i pull it low i don't care about uh, the camera shaking it was enough laggy <laughs> when i opened the game after you have the regular camera distance and this is again very important because this helps you to have a better depth of view my meaning is the regular camera distance, it's for the exploration, the combat is for the battle, and all of it help you to see what's happening around you, because when it comes, 
with the default setting it is too close to the character you don't see really well sometimes even some bosses i i can just see a part of the bosses i don't see any empty space on the left right bottom and i you know i feel like i'm too much into it so to me to be able to just put the camera back and have a wider view of what's happening around me during exploration uh, it's so helpful, especially during the combat, so I highly recommend you do so. Now if we go to the last part here, those are the automatic features. Camera reset, moving camera correction, combat camera correction, you need to put this on. Because as I'm going to explain to you after on the joystick part of the thing, this is really bad, so it really helps you to reset your camera every single time after motion, after a battle, and this helps you out. And at last, of course, assisted aiming is a must on mobile, in my opinion, because because the targeted button, uh, we're going to speak about it in the joystick section, but is just awful. Uh, it's nice for single boss, but when there are plenty of mobs around you, you're around the group and you want to target someone specifically, especially in Tower Ascension, this is just too bad. You cannot decide who you are targeting when there are many enemies, so I recommend you keep assisted aiming. It will automatically target the nearest enemy. And finally, on the bottom here, the input setting so here we come more about the gameplay this is motion control sensitivity and when the game come i believe it's at 0 0.3 it's too stiff in the meaning of you cannot walk really as soon as you put your thumb on the joystick and you try to just walk me my experience is just running right away so you have to make it more sensitive so i put 0 0.6 i like 0 0.7 it's mostly it doesn't change nothing i still able to run easily it's just to keep myself on the small circle, if you look closely, you have small circle when you put a thumb on your joystick on your screen, this is your walking zone, and after, when you get out of this walking zone, you enter into the running zone for your joystick directional button. So this is why I like it at 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Really a game changer, especially during the challenge, because you don't want to fall off the cliff when you want to walk on a little path or whatsoever. And finally, the action here, the joystick. So first of all, the custom key bind. Very important here, you can go to the settings and you can resize and also the transparency. And this is really, to me, another game changer because uh, I had to put, you know, the joystick especially. We are going to speak about it, but it's a big issue. And so I had to really try to bring it as close as I can to make myself comfortable for my left thumb to move my character all around. And after for the other button, it's totally up to you. You can customize all of this. And yeah, some people even didn't know. And while we are here, so let's look at the bottom. This is the target button. So here on the bottom left, and this is where you target enemy. And unfortunately, this button, as I mentioned to you, use it during the boss fight. You have just one boss or two. It's okay because you can just press another time. It will target the second one. But when you have many enemies, unless you are just cle clearing a very easy mob groups somewhere on the map and you don't care, it's okay. But when you're in the Tower of Ascension and you need to bring down, for example, the shielder first, uh, this can be a big issue, so be aware about it. And at last, the joystick mode. So, static and dynamic. This is my little rant here. In the meaning of, unfortunately, I believe they make it too sensitive in a way of whatever you're on the static or dynamic, you will always have sometimes that issue when you put your thumbs on to go on the left, on the right, you're pressing on. Just by pressing on, the character goes to the opposite direction. And this is simply because they fix the sensitivity way too high. But overall, I highly recommend static. You can try for yourself because dynamic, so dynamic, it's when you press somewhere around the bottom corner of your phone, you know, it will adapt immediately. But it's exactly the same issue, even worse than the static joystick. Sometimes, once again, just on press, if you have a large thumb like me, you have big hands, you know, you will just go opposite direction and you will feel even worse with the dynamic button. And if I did any mistake or you have any advices to bring, please feel free to mention it in the comment section below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Remember to destroy that like button and hit that bell. Turn on this notification to receive more content and support the channel. And as usual, I wish you all to be safe, to be well, and until the next, stay tuned everybody.